seven tiers, 40 plus wide receivers, also including rookie value picks within those wide oh receiver gosh. tiers. So we're going to be breaking it down all here today, having some conversations. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight yep. into it. Zach, your first tier. All right, tier one. My wide receiver one as of today is CeeDee Lamb. Okay, uh, that's fair. Ben Jefferson is my two. Jamar Chase is my three. I don't really have a... Yeah. You know, if, if you have, like, Chase as your number one or Jefferson as your one, I, just, I don't really care. It's Whoever you want there is completely fine, but I think these three guys are in that tier one. What I will say in defense of CeeDee Lamb is that in the past three years, CeeDee Lamb... His point per game performance this year at 23.7 is higher than Jefferson or Chase has ever done. Right. Um, in those past three years. So if you're talking about, wow, like really? Like CD Lamb does even have the the ceiling that those guys have? Like, uh, yeah, he was a wide receiver one last year. Uh, mm -hmm. he's young. He's about to get a huge deal. And he put up more points per game than any of those guys have in the past couple years. So I'll put CD Lamb at one, but if you have Jefferson one or Chase one, I don't really care. Like either way between those two names. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also say this is probably where I would value the 101 as well. Now, okay. the 101, we're assuming locked and loaded in super flex leagues. The picks that we yes. will talk about today is super flex values. Mm -hmm. That will be Caleb Williams. And I'm just thinking of like a super flex startup draft. I think those three wide receivers probably go first, but I think Caleb is right behind them. And there might be a scenario in May where Caleb might be ahead of them in startup drafts. That's how valuable this guy is. Yeah. Um, so that's well, that's what tier one would look for me. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I'm, I'm assuming that's probably at the end of the first round, probably what mm. maybe the 110 and later. It could even be yeah. the 108. I would say depending on how early you want to take one of these wide receivers and maybe you'll see Caleb going at the 112 or the 201 type turn. But yeah, I completely agree. A lot of these things I would say just to add on, not too much. A lot of quarterback play is definitely, I think, riding on these top three guys. And I think that's why you're going to be seeing the jumble in a lot of people's rankings. CeeDee sure. Lamb with a long-term contract uh, coming soon with Dak Prescott, right? Justin Jefferson, a new quarterback incoming. Is that quarterback sure. a high-caliber quarterback? And then Jamar Chase there with Joe Burrow, which seems really safe there. So I do have Jamar Chase yeah. as my wide receiver, too, and Justin Jefferson as three, just based off of the quarterback play. But the talent is all still there. If I knew I could pivot from, from CD to Chase and get extra, I would do it in a yeah. heartbeat. And I think that's exactly what, you know, I think we kind of been talking about all, all season here. All right, tier two, take us through it. Tier two, I think this is where things get controversial. I can oh. already see the chat. You're an okay. idiot. This guy hasn't even taken a snap in the NFL. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't, <laughs> like, calling I think you this is where I would put Marvin. This is where I would put the 102. Marvin Harrison Jr., my wide receiver four at this point. Oh, look, okay. if he goes to the Patriots, we don't know the landing spots yet. We'll have to reassess, right? But assuming he goes mm -hmm. to the Cardinals or the Chargers, which seems like the most likely scenario right now, I have no reason to believe looking at his profile and scouting him that he shouldn't be a top five wide receiver the day he enters in the, the NFL. And that might rub a lot of people wrong. I'm totally, right. I hear you guys. Right. I totally hear you because Amon Ross St. Brown is next as well as Puka Nakua. You might be saying to yourself, there's no way I would sell Amon Ross for the 102. And that's fine. You feel that way. Not everyone does, but you do, and you're totally valid in feeling that way. We already know what Amon Ra is. We already know what Puka Nakua is in the league, so I, I, I can totally hear you guys, but they're in the same tier. So it's not like if you sure. were to say, you know, you think Marvin's way more valuable than these names? No, they're in the same tier. They're right beside each other. You know, it's just a little nitpicky. Um, I'll probably put the 103 right here before I put Garrett Wilson. Uh, the 103, you kind of have your range of like your Jaden Daniels, your... Drake Mays, your Malik neighbors, right? Thinking about a startup, if Daniels does go top three and May goes top three, if May goes to the Vikings, if Daniels goes to the Commanders, you really think people aren't going to start drafting in a super flex startup draft those quarterbacks over a Garrett Wilson? Sure. Over an AJ Brown? I mean, sure. I think I think they probably would. That's why I have the 104 and the 105 and then AJ Brown to round off tier two. I just personally believe that if you're in a startup, at some point, the consensus will be Give me Jaden Daniels over A.J. Brown, the guy who just drafted top three. You know, give me a Malik Neighbors, the guy who just went, you know, uh, insert team, Giants at, at pick five or whatever you guys have. Sure. Uh, so everyone might agree. They might disagree. That's totally fine. But keep in mind, these are all in the same tier. And that's what I think you should be focusing on. I value all these things closely. Right. Look, and it makes sense. You know, we kind of been, well, not we kind of, we've been preaching all offseason. You want to be in that top five pick. 
because all those guys feel like high caliber, you know, a blue chip type players, which is really, really crucial. Blue collar, like, brother. Blue collar. They're just get, get ready to work. Blue collar, blue chip, just <laughs> phenomenal players coming blue into 42. the... <laughs> blue 42. Just really good players that we feel yeah, like yeah. are going to be a, a really yeah. fantastic long-term um, dynasty asset for your team here from the 102, really when the 101 to the 105 here, no matter who you get, yeah. we feel like these guys instantly slot into these higher upper echelons, top tiers that we've had here. We've yeah. seen the Garrett Wilsons. We see the NJ Browns be successful. The Pukas, the Monron St. Browns. It comes down to personal preference. It comes down to situational type of things, right? If Marvin Harrison does go to the Chargers, who literally no one is there, with Justin Herbert, I think we will all want Marvin Harrison Jr. just based off situation. Sure. It feels like over a Monroe St. Brown, over Garrett Wilson, you know, over A.J. Brown, who has Devonta yeah. Smith, Saquon Barkley, Dallas Goddard, Marvin Harrison Jr. hypothetically going mm-hmm. to the Chargers, instantly getting all the Keenan Allen targets, it feels like, all the Mike Williams target, it feels like. Right. Those are the type of situations we're going to have to be thinking about when the draft actually happens and then when you're actually doing your personal rankings. So a lot yeah. of this is no question projections, but keep in yeah, mind all, all this is very fluid as well. Garrett Wilson <laughs> is straight projection at this point, right? I hundred percent. So you could say that the rookie picks are, but so is Garrett Wilson. I would say that you could put a a two A and a two B tier. You could split that right down the middle where Puka in the one hundred three is. I think you could right. you could probably put another tier in there uh, between the 102 to Puka and the 103 to AJ Brown if, if you wanted as well. Yeah, so I, I completely agree with the second tier here. A lot of fantastic players that you'll be getting in the top five of your NFL dra- or rookie drafts. And then in the second tier or second round of your dynasty starts up. I mean, like, this is a stacked mm-hmm. second round. Yeah. Right? I mean, yep. that's where you could be getting a massive run of wide receivers and quarterbacks, which is going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal value for all of you guys. All right, tier three. Tier three, uh, things are going to get funky. You're about to start seeing some oh. changes from free agency and some projecting going on here. Uh, here we go. If you haven't already seen some projecting. I will put Tyree Kill here. There's no reason to believe he's going to, you know, break <laughs> down this year. I mean, yeah. there's no indication of that being mm-hmm. the case. Mm-hmm. This is where things get a little weird, Okay. <laughs> a little weird. I'm ready for the hate. I'm ready for the hate. Okay. The I'm... more I think about it, why would Drake London not be ahead of Chris Olave? Genuine question. It's not a genuine question. Why would Drake I mean... London not be ahead of Chris Olave at this point? I know we're projecting. When has Chris Olave ever lived up to the potential that we have placed on him? He was a wide receiver 16 last year, before that top 24 wide receiver in his rookie season. Chris Olave is stuck with Derek Carr. That is not going to change this offseason. Come on. What has already changed? Drake London has received Kirk Cousins on his team. The same Drake London who was accounting for, what, 30%, around around 30% of the target share on this team for the last couple of years? So I just think Drake London is prepped for an absolute breakout. He has the quarterback we have been waiting for. Sure. What has it been with Drake London and Kyle Pitts? Man, once they get a quarterback, there is no ceiling. So some people will tell you the hype is too much. I'm riding the hype train. I might be leading the hype train at this point, putting him ahead of Chris Olave. But if you think about it, very good prospects. Sure. Okay, well, Olave was drafted higher than London. He wasn't, though. He wasn't. No. Drake London was selected first. Uh, Oh, okay, well, he's a better pedigree. What do you mean? Chris Olave was a three-star recruit. Doesn't mean he's a worse NFL player. I'm saying these guys, put Olave on the Falcons. Give me all the Olave that you can get right now with Kirk Cousins, right? Sure. But right now, we got to look at their situations and what those will look like for at least the next two years. And I prefer Drake London. Um, this is also around where I would put the 106. You're thinking of Roma Dunze territory, right? Right, mm-hmm. right around where we would value Roma Dunze, depending on where he goes. And I'd also put DJ Moore in this tier. Yes, I know a lot of people disagree with that, but DJ Moore is still a top 10 wide receiver for me in Dynasty football. They add Keenan Allen, so clearly that's going to be a concern. But the offense is completely going to change. You know, it's like thinking about the Texans offense uh, before they had C.J. Stroud and just, hey, that offense isn't going to be good for your receiver. I mean, that's just not the case anymore. It's a different offensive coordinator. There is a whole new quarterback in with Justin Fields. We don't hate Justin Fields at all, but everyone is aware that there are limitations of what you can do through the air. So it was a low volume pass offense. They were bottom five in the NFL. Now you get Caleb Williams. All you need to do is get right around middle of the NFL 
uh, as far as volume offense. And I think we'll see a huge season from DJ Moore and yeah. Keenan Allen. I think they can coexist together under that new offense. So that's my tier three there. What, anything uh, you disagree with? Uh, no. Like, what, do you, what do you think? I, I completely agree. I think this is exactly what we've been talking about. DJ, Moore. I, I would personally argue that DJ Moore can go ahead of Chris Olave. That's what I would say. Um, just okay. based off of situation, you kind of hinted already about sure. I've been a really big, massive sell based off of Chris Olave's value and what he's actually been returning to us on a fantasy, you know, per yeah. game basis. Can I pivot to something that feels a little bit more certain that the, the situation feels better, that the fantasy points outcome on our end is what that we what we were hoping for and requiring more consistency, because once again, the ups and downs with Derek Carr. Yes, he has put up a consistent fancy points with Amari Cooper back in the day, with Devontae Adams back in the day, but now he has Chris Olave, and I would say, in my personal opinion, uh, just a, a a jumble of a team that the Saints are, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, I just want to pivot over that situation. You know what's funny about this, mm-hmm. and, and, and uh, I think we've talked about this before, but it just kind of clicked with me. Um, you know, two or three years ago, we were very low on DJ Moore. Yeah. We liked DJ Moore, but we said he's in a terrible position. Uh, it was that year where Baker Mayfield joined the Panthers, and everyone's like, oh my God, DJ Moore breakout, top 12 guy. We didn't have him ranked anywhere near that. And that wasn't <laughs> because we didn't think he was a good player. It's because his situation was not going to change that year. That's how we feel about Chris Olave, a very good player who's always going to be at minimum a number two, but is going to be held back by his environment until his environment changes. Exactly. Um, and by the way, Derek Carr doesn't have an out until the after the 2025 season. So he's probably their quarterback for the next two years. Yeah, and it's a tough situation here. So if I could pivot to DJ Moore, who, yeah, has Keenan Allen, but is getting Caleb Williams and has that long-term contract is going to be the long-term answer there for the Chicago Bears, or Drake London, who is still on his rookie contract with Kirk Cousins, who just got 100 milli, or Tyreek Hill, who, yeah, is probably the older wide receiver, but I know the consistent fantasy output that he's going to be bringing me on a week-to-week basis. Yeah. And that's why Tyreek Hill is here, one of the older wide receivers, I would say, in this group. I think in the, in the top three tiers. Yeah, yeah, so far. But we know 23.5 fantasy points per game. Wide receiver two this past year, if I'm not mistaken, the wide receiver one the year before. It's just going to continue, it feels like. So yeah. uh, I completely I would say, agree. Um, I'm totally on board. You guys know this. If you've watched any of our team reviews this year, we've been on board from pivoting from Alave to Moore. Now, I have Alave one spot ahead of Moore. But if I'm pivoting, I'm super happy to do that. But I need more in return to do that at this point, right? Just based on the value. Keenan, I would just say based on the value, yeah, as well. Yeah, so I, I just need a little bit more in return. But I'm 100% open to making that move. Yeah, and before we go to tier 4, keep in mind, this is what, DJ Moore, your top, what's this, 11 in my county? 10, I top, think. Top 10 wide receivers in the community. He's outside the top 15. 11, 11. Oh, sorry, okay. Yeah. I know. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, so right? I, I don't get that. This is our rankings, but then look at the consensus community. DJ Moore is significantly lower. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. All right. Tier four. Well, just before we get into tier four, we want to let you guys know that our rankings are consistently being updated mm-hmm. over on the Flock Fantasy site. If you want access to our rankings, also all of the articles that we have, our 2024 rookie report, if you want your dynasty team to be reviewed by us on a live stream, you can get all that just by becoming a Mother Flocker member with the promo code LAN. But wait, there's more, like an infomercial. Um, <laughs> you are supporting us. Uh, you can see on the screen what you get in return. If you think it's worth value and you see value in it, then consider supporting the show. If not, no worries at all. But tier four, this is where I would put the 107. Okay. Um, and it, it's my opinion, these rookie values, Superflex, PPR, non tight and premium, that's how we're currently valuing these picks, right? That's right. And that's Brock Bowers at the 107 consensus right now. That might change. Might be J.J. McCarthy. Who knows? But at the moment, I would put the 106 in Tier 3. The 104 in Tier... Or the 107 in Tier 4, simply because you don't get to choose your destiny at that pick. Um, You're more waiting to see what the person ahead of you does. Um, But this Tier 4, I'm in love with. I love every single one of these players. Nico Collins. I think he's a real deal. I think the breakout was for real. Rasheed Rice. Rasheed yeah, Rice. a lot of people disagree with me, but if you look at when Rasheed Rice became a full-time starter for the Chiefs, he was absolutely dominant. Uh, top 15 wide receiver on a per-game basis as a rookie. His first year in an Andy Reid offense, people do not give him enough credit for what he did 
when he became a full-time starter. No, Hollywood Brown does not concern me. In fact, it makes me more confident that they probably won't go wide receiver in the first round um, because they already have a better wide receiver room than what they had last year when they won the Super Bowl. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Brandon Ayuk, uh, I would put in this tier. Jalen Waddle, who's still a very good player, just needs to put it together again. A bad year last year with injuries. Michael Pittman Jr., who just got extended, and then Tank Dell, followed by the 108. You know, you think about the 108, your Brian Thomas Jr. range, maybe a Dunze if he falls, J.J. McCarthy if he goes in the top 10. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, I love this tier so much. Again, focus less on, what, you have Tank Dell at the bottom of the tier and Nico at the front? Focus on, they're in the same tier. I would value them very similarly. Uh, so yeah, this is where I would see, uh, you know, my top, 13, 14, 16 or so? Yeah, 16 or so, which makes sense here for, for all these guys. I think you kind of hit the nail on the head with the, each and every one of these players. I think when you kind of get into this tier, I'm assuming this is around round three, middle of round three, potentially, in a mm. Dynasty Superflex startup here. This is kind of where these guys are valued at the moment. Um, and I, I love each and every one of these players. Rasheed Rice, you talked about Nico Collins and Tank Dell. I think both of these guys, in my personal rankings, I have them both as my top 12. They're back-to-back. -back. I actually have Tank Dell ahead of Nico Collins, personally. But yes, I, it doesn't necessarily matter where you have them ranked. They're all in the same tier. Um, so it really, it's, it's preference. I would say my biggest concern, which I know you kind of hinted a little bit, was Jay Nawado and his injury. I think he's kind of in this... All right, you're gonna take a back seat here with Jalen, uh, with Tyree Kill, and I'm not necessarily sure if kind of what we talked about with Chris Olave, the consistent fantasy where you're drafting Jalen Waddle and what you're getting in return is maybe where we should potentially be ranking him. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it personally because hey, okay, he's averaging what? Let's just say he's averaging around 12 to 15 fantasy points. Is he worth a top 13 pick? or sorry, uh, a top three, third round pick where I could potentially be getting someone like a Michael Pittman who's averaging a little bit higher, a Tank Dell a mm -hmm. little bit higher. Um, you can even go into the next tier that we'll probably talk about where they could potentially be hitting that same threshold as well when you think of, yeah. you know, those second you know, tier five guys, which we'll talk about, which it, when you guys have it, you'll understand. But yeah. I think that's kind of my biggest concern in this tier no, I, I hear is Jalen Waddle. And it's not a knock on him. The talent's there. It's just all yeah. the focus is on Tyreek Hill when he's on the field, sure. which is annoying. And I think we also have to recognize that we are <clears> playing <throat> Dynasty in the span of like one to two years. But also like Waddle just last year, the year that not the year that just happened, but the year before was a top 10 wide receiver in fantasy. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to keep that in mind. You know, we can't overcorrect too much. Sure. We are just one year removed from him having almost 1,400 yards and eight touchdowns and, you know, top 10 finish in fantasy. Uh, it wasn't consistent this year. There was a lot of injuries, but I still believe he has that talent to be a top 10 wide receiver yeah. um, in the league. I think all of these guys, tier four, they're all fighting, I think, right around that top 12 range um, in fantasy next year on a per game basis. But I agree in the sense like I would just like a lot of it. If I'm pivoting down from Waddle, I'm totally open to that. He is not an untouchable player on my roster, but I have to get a return that's worthwhile to do it. Yeah, completely Completely agree there with Waddle. Love everyone else on the list here. Tier five. Yep. Tier five. All right. <laughs> Zay Flowers. Zaza. Zaza. Uh, <laughs> T. Higgins. This is a huge tier. So let's just get oh through it and we'll oh talk boy. about it. Devonta Smith. Jordan Addison. Jackson Smith and Jigba. I will put the 109, the 110 right in this range. It's not a, okay. a science at this point. Sure. I, you might prefer the 109 over one of these names. I don't, you know, there's not a clear science right now. Metcalf, uh, Pickens, and then the last player in this tier would probably be a Jaden Reed. Wow. Now, if I big. had a name like a Zay, a Higgins, a Smith, I would, or an Addison or JSN, I would be looking at, okay, does the Jaden Reed owner, is he willing to, um, you know, grab a Zay Flowers for me and I can get Reed and do a, a pick swap to get a first in a future draft? Uh, or can I do that with a George Pickens, et cetera? But all these guys I would view in, this, in a similar tier as we head into the 2024 season. Is there anyone in particular that you'd like to talk about or you agree or disagree with? No, I think all these guys... Look, this is what I would say with all these guys in this Tier 5. We believe their ceiling could easily jump into that top 12. At least that's how I feel. 
I can see Jordan Addison being top 12. We've seen Devonta Smith, T. Higgins, if I'm not mistaken, be top 12 or at least top 15. Zay Flowers, we believe mm. his ceiling can be there. Jackson Smith and Jigba. DK Metcalf, we've seen already. George Pickens finally gets a new quarterback. We can see it potentially if they don't draft sure. another wide receiver. Same thing with Jaden Reed, who was a league winner in the second half of the season last year with Jordan Love. All these guys' value could potentially be on that next tier. But there's still a lot of question marks with a lot of situational sure. base concerns when you think of each and every one of these players. There's two players yeah. I want to talk about because okay. I know a lot of people have been seeing in my, some of my videos saying it's time to panic on Jackson Smith and Jigba. It's time to sell Jordan Addison. Sure. I'm willing to pivot off of both of these guys for better value here and okay. for, for better situational positions, right? If I can get a T Higgins who is still in the Bengals, who is wide receiver too, I'm willing to do that knowing that the quarterback play is still the same. Knowing sure. that the situation and the output that T. Higgins can produce right. with even the Jamar Chase, I would rather have. And some people would rather have a Jordan Addison. Some people would and, rather and, have and, a Jackson. In that debate, like Jacob. age shouldn't be a concern either. Like if you're no. if you're the Addison guy and you're like, there's no way I would do that because of age. Like that's ridiculous. Come up with a better argument. Yeah, completely agree here. So I I just want to say like we see how successful each and every one of these guys can be or have already been. Yeah. A lot of situational basis really falls or really is going to be determined coming into this year. And all these guys can potentially yeah. be in tier seven next year based on the, not tier seven, that's probably a bit drastic. Maybe like a tier down, right? Tier sure. six next year based I on the situation. I don't really have any concerns about any of these players' values this time next year. Um, but I just don't know that they can reach like that upper echelon like consistently moving forward either. Yeah. Um, what I would say on JSN is, uh, you know, funnily enough, we released a video two days ago at the time of recording this talking about players to panic on. You brought up JSN. We had a good conversation about it. The people who actually listened all the way through that video would have heard two have sides. to listen. Someone who liked JSN and someone who didn't. But the most liked comment on that video is these guys are the biggest JSN haters on YouTube. Like, clearly, if you guys know me, you will know there's not a player I loved more in last year's draft than Jackson Smith and Jigba. So that is just, like, very silly. But what I would say about JSN, a lot of people brought up some good points. Uh, and, and some of the same points that I also brought up, um, which was, number one, the offensive coordinator change is sure. actually huge. We cannot undervalue the offensive coordinator change. Yep. Bringing in the kid from Washington, from the Huskies. He's not a kid. He's a man. Yeah. Uh, you know, he obviously there will be less two wide receiver sets. There will be more three wide receiver sets within this offense. There is a lot of reason to believe that JSN can take a next step. Sure. Yes. The Tyler Lockett restructure is a concern, but he did take less money. And there is a belief that he could be the number three on this team. Um, while Jason kind of takes over that number two role or that wide receiver one, wide receiver one, a one B role. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard uh, Grubb talk about how JSN, you know, how he loved to use Jalen McMillan within his offense. If you watch Jalen McMillan on film this year, he would have put up huge numbers. If he was healthy, the games, he was healthy. He put up some impressive numbers in the playoffs and also in the first couple weeks of the season. So I still believe Jason is an elite talent. Uh, he just hasn't been given opportunity. He only had 93 targets last year. Yeah. I mean, what would JSN have done if he was in Puka Nakua's situation, right? Context is important. Situation is important. No question. And in case it needs to be said, I thought it was very obvious. I am not out on Jackson Smith and Jigba in mm -hmm. case it needs to be said. Yeah. And and I kind of like, you know, I, I was kind of mentioned saying like, hey, if I can pivot off to a situation that I feel more comfortable right now. Um, that I still believe that ceiling is going to be higher. I can get value basing off your yeah. team construction. I'm willing to do that because at the moment, according to the community, he is valued at the 109, 108. And you tell me, I don't know, you comment down below with this class coming in at the 109, 108. Do you feel comfortable taking one of those players who hasn't been in the NFL yet after seeing, knowing the situation Jackson Smith and Jigba yeah. is in going into year two? I, I, you weigh that yourself, right? Because at the it's 109. It's a great point. Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. I was just going to add to that. Like, I, I would say um, we don't know the answer to that yet. Yeah, we you don't. don't know the answer to that yet. But I, can't, I mean, if Brian Thomas Jr. is on the Steelers, would you want him or Jackson's been the Jigba? Sure. I probably would still lean JSN, right? Yeah. So there's so many different snares that you can play in your mind. What I mm -hmm. would say is clearly based off my rankings, if you can get the 107 for JSN, I'm doing that in a heartbeat because I know that could be Ramadun's, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, exactly. it's a tough, tough one to play right now because there's a lot of projection yeah, all the way around. Exactly. A lot of projection all the way around. So you, I think that is something that you guys as, you know, Dynasty League owners and Jackson Smith and Jigba owners are going to have to kind of navigate throughout this offseason, especially if somebody's out there saying, you know what? All right, let's take a risk. Um, I'm mm -hmm. sending you the 108 or the 107 and send me Jackson Smith and Jigba. You got to weigh that. Yeah. You got to weigh the pros and cons there. But yeah, love everyone on, on this list. Um, I don't think I have any concerns with, I guess, this tier so far. So we can yeah. move on to the next one, tier six. All right, tier six is the biggest tier, actually. Um, okay, even you'll find big, a, you'll, bigger. Tier yeah, five. even bigger. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you'll find, actually, now that I'm looking at it, this tier is just straight veterans. It's just straight veterans. So there could be some huge values here. Debo. I'd probably put the 111 right around here. Uh, you know, that is probably your Lad McConkey range. Yeah. Trey Benson, if he goes round two, or Brooks, if he goes round two. What if Bo Nix ends up going in the end of the first round? You know, you kind of have to weigh that. Yeah. Those options are Adonai, Xavier Worthy. Uh, I put Mike Evans here after he gets his contract extension. I'd also put the 112 right after him. Again, all those same players that I named, that's the range that you're in. Uh, Stephon Diggs, I brought up a bit. We talked about Diggs on that panic video. And I said I would trade any late first for Stephon Diggs. Exactly where I feel here based off my rankings. I would also put the 201 to the 206 in this range. It's a wide range of picks. Okay. But this is kind of the range where those early seconds start to come into play. I don't think you can get a first for Terry McLaurin. I don't think you can get a first for Devontae Adams. No. I don't think you can get a first for Amari Cooper. No. For Calvin Ridley. Mm -hmm. For Deontay Johnson. Do you know what I mean? I just don't think you get a first for any one of those players. But that is probably where... Um, early seconds start to come into play with how strong this class is. Yeah, I completely agree here um, with each and every one of these guys. I think the veterans that I feel comfortable with, Debo, Mike Evans, I would throw Stephon Diggs um, in that conversation still, okay. at least for this year. Now for the future, definitely a concern. Um, but Calvin Ridley, Deontay Johnson, two situations that have changed so far this year. Mm. I know we kind of broke it down in some live streams here, but... You know, where do you see these guys' ceiling going? Because I think we see it different when yeah. it comes down to Deontay Johnson specifically. I don't, I would rather have the 201 and the 206, which yeah, I, yeah, that's why yeah, Johnson's at the end which, of that range. Yeah, which you have there. So I'm assuming we might have, you might have changed your tune on Deontay because no, no, okay. no. I, I mean, if, if I'm a competing team, I'm super happy to send the 203 to the 206 for Deontay Johnson. Um, okay. I okay. think in redraft leagues, I will be like, stupidly high on Deontay Johnson when, when it comes to redraft rankings mm -hmm. and underdog rankings and that, and that kind of thing. Um, you're telling me that Adam Thielen at the age of 33 with really no competent offense whatsoever can do what he did last year. Um, what, what did Adam Thielen finish? I'm trying to remember Adam Thielen, the wide receiver 17 last year, 137 targets. So you're telling me that we get Deontay Johnson in this offense, a guy who can separate and no competition around him right now. They have no first-round pick. They do have a second-round pick. Maybe they add a wide receiver or they trade for one. But you're telling me I got Deontay Johnson as the number one with Bryce Young, who I think is a good quarterback, and just needs someone who is more consistent like a Deontay. I think there is a true ceiling for a top 15 finish for Deontay Johnson in fantasy this year. The issue is this is the last year of his contract. So I don't know where he's going to go. There is no long-term security. If it's a redraft league, give me Deontay over Calvin. However, in a dynasty league, give me Calvin over Deontay by one spot. The only sure. reason is because we have a long-term contract. We have exactly. securities, and this new offensive uh, coordinator, new head coach, the same coaching staff uh, you know, that was heavily involved with Joe Burrow's ascension and what happened over there in Cincinnati where they turned things around through the air. You know, it's funny. The entire Twitter sphere is saying that Calvin really was overpaid. Um, do you know last time that that happened? Christian Kirk with the Jacksonville Kirk. Jaguars, <laughs> yeah, right? Kirk. Put up a pretty good year, didn't he? Um, and he's held value pretty well throughout that contract. So it's my opinion that the margins where fantasy changes is within change in the real NFL world. Sure. When there's a new coach, when mm -hmm. there's a new OC, um, when a player, you know, free agency, massive changes like Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta, the margins are in where change occurs and changes occurred for Calvin Ridley, I understand we don't know what Will Levis is going to be, right? I mean, if Calvin Ridley, let, 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 let's say Kirk Cousins went to Tennessee and Calvin Ridley got that contract, we'd feel so much better about him. So that's why he's still 
down here at tier six, I still think he's a very talented wide receiver. Reception perception profile would show you that he's still one of the best separators in the NFL as well. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I think just that long-term security is what uh, gets me over the edge there and also makes me excited about what he could be in this offense with a new offensive mind uh, behind it. Yeah, well, especially with the Titans there, specifically for Calvin Ridley, really, in, my, in my perspective, I, I, I can see it. Um, my biggest concern is... Why could why situation is huge, but if he couldn't do it with T. Law, can he actually do it with Will Levis? Now, sure. once again, what's like I said before, situation is pretty big. Quarterback play is pretty significant as well, and arguably he's going into a worse quarterback specifically situation. Oh, he is. He is. Um, so I think that is my biggest concern with Calvin. I think the talent's still there. Yes, the separation and reception perception is tremendous, and it it just speaks to the fact that, you know, him and Trevor Lawrence, Calvin Ridley and Trevor Lawrence, weren't on the same page a lot of those times. No, so that's my sure. one of my concerns is really the quarterback play. But I, uh, I'm i believing in Will Levis because I bought him in a buy-low opportunity saying, hey, take a chance on him. Um, and Deontay Johnson specifically, I think because I don't have that long-term contract uh, security, I guess even in a redraft perspective, it makes me think that he's just another addition to this team to where, like, hey, if Adam Thielen goes down, if one of our rookie wide receivers that we can draft to, once again, they have the 33rd pick in the second round, the first pick in the second round, is that an Xavier Worthy? Is that an Xavier Leggett? Is that a Lab McConkley? I think all those things, once again, projecting, all those things then shift Deontay Johnson's value. And I think I am more leaning towards them drafting one of these guys that I believe can be an impact player now, mm -hmm rather than later, I think, and then uh, it affects Deontay Johnson. And you have to keep in mind, if hypothetically, Lad McConkie goes there, Deontay Johnson goes there, and Adam Thielen are all there, I don't think anyone can say who's the number one guy. Now, we can go based off of, you know, history of success. We can go based off separation. We can go based off of youth, or whatever the case may be. I don't think anyone in the dynasty community would be able to tell us who would be the number one guy and who we would want to draft until the season actually started. And if I can get that value now at the 201, uh, you know, uh, the 201 or 206, I would rather be doing that now rather than later. Yeah, I, I just heavily disagree. Like, we're on <clears throat> yeah. two completely different sides of that fence. To me, um, sometimes it is as easy as one plus two equals three. <laughs> yeah. All offseason, we have talked about how they need a receiver to get open. Deontay Johnson is an incredible separator. I 95% of my mind is completely made up that Deontay is the unquestioned number one on that team. Like, not even close. Even if they bring in a lad McConkey, mm -hmm. I think McConkey will have a chance to obviously be just as relevant as Deontay Johnson. But to me, you don't make this move unless it's like, yes, this is the guy that we needed to have Bryce take the next step. So mm -hmm. I just completely disagree. We've seen a huge history of Deontay Johnson being able to handle yep. a large amount of targets. Yeah. And I just don't think you make this trade unless you view him as the answer to your problem. So uh, we're on, on two different sides of that coin. Yeah, um, that's okay. For sure. It's good, good to know. I'm excited to see what's going to happen with Deontay coming in here. So let us know what you believe or what you think in the comments about Deontay. Yeah. But um, Sorry, last thing I would mm -hmm. say as well is getting Deontay Johnson means you don't have to get a wide receiver at 33. You probably should, but they have opened up a lot of flexibility for their roster moving forward. Sure, sure. Especially we're getting that Brian's Burns trades. They have an extra pick in the second round. So yeah. anything is definitely possible for the Carolina Panthers. I mean... Could there be a team that goes back into the first, sending both of those second round picks sure. to get a wide receiver that they like? Now, that would be a whole different conversation um, and a whole different scenario. But yeah. um, once again, a lot of projecting. Anything can happen. Yeah. Excited for the NFL draft. Tier 7, take us through it. Tier 7, I'll just list off names and we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. Christian yeah. Kirk, uh, Christian Watson, who I'm not out on. I think he's a, a fun buy low. Cooper Cup. Chris Godwin, Hollywood Brown, Jamison Williams, who I think is going to break out this year. Uh, I'll say that every year for the next 10 years. Josh Downs. <laughs> and then I will put the late seconds valued right around here after, after Downs or so. It's a really strong class. So that 207 it could be a player you really love at this point. Yeah. Um, look, Christian Kirk, Christian Watson is actually two guys I'm bringing in a video coming up coming out this week um this i'm pretty sure will be at the end of the week by the time you guys are watching this video um some guys that no one are no one's talking about here so good yeah. value is coming in in tier seven 
guys that have both, you know, been, well, Christian Watson was a league winner what, two years ago there with Aaron Rodgers. Christian Kirk has always been a very consistent wide receiver three or flex option for your, for your team, which is something that you would want in a consistent basis, even with Trevor Lawrence, even if they get another wide receiver. I honestly don't care who that is. I think Christian yeah. Kirk is still going to be getting a lot of those targets there. And we've seen those targets distribute to yeah. Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, Travis Etienne, mm -hmm. Calvin Ridley, even so last year. I think yeah. those targets are fine for Christian Kirk, and no one's talking about him, especially if you can for get sure. him at a really, really good value here. I'm not sure where you have him in the rankings. I'm assuming outside, well, early 30s, maybe mid 30s here. Mm. Um, yeah, he's a it, huge value. He's a huge winner from free agency, and you're right, no one's talking about it. Yeah, um, and Christian Watson, um, one of the guys that have, you know, when he was on the field, he was decent. When he was off the field, yeah. obviously, is the biggest, biggest concern. He had a lot of missed time in his past two years. But if he can stay healthy with the quarterback that we all know can produce fantasy relevant wide receivers, no matter who it is. I mean, we got Dontavion Vicks, Romeo Dubs. Mm -hmm. My guy is feeding the ball to whoever is on the field. Mm -hmm. Christian Watson is still a guy that can definitely play and yeah. has that speed and opportunity to take it to the next level here. But um, I'd say this. If Christian Watson, if I knew the, for the next two years he would be healthy every game, um, that would be exciting. Where would I rank him? Like that's, <laughs> yeah. I probably would rank him pretty close to Jane Reed. Mm -hmm. Pretty close. Because I think Wicks is going to play a big part in that offense. But you have to kind of make a call or you're out on these guys. You have to make a call. Who is the guy for the, for the Packers moving forward? Or just have to say, I'm out. Because I don't know. Because yeah. there's a lot of good players there, you know? Yeah, completely agree there. Um, huh? Hollywood Brown is interesting. I, I don't know why. I don't know, like. I, maybe it's my bias towards Rasheed Rice. I just don't see Hollywood Brown being like some sort of like top 15 finish in the Chiefs. Um, it doesn't make sense within the Chiefs offense. I've heard a lot of people say he is closer to Tyreek Hill than anything they've ever had outside wow. of when Tyreek left. I just thought to myself, like, are you, are we, in, are we living in the same reality? Like, what? So, so he's the closest thing <laughs> they've had since Tyreek, since Tyreek left. <laughs> That doesn't make him anywhere near Tyreek Hill. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, the offense yeah. has completely changed. He's not going to play anywhere near the same role. Um, MVS was stretching the field. They had no one after MVS left to stretch the field. Now you have Hollywood Brown who's going to stretch the field, and he's a way, way better addition uh, than MVS was. But I think in best ball, I'll be in on Hollywood Brown. But yeah, I'm not games. sure how consistently I'll be able to start him because he is, what, the third best receiver on their team under – under coverage, like in the middle of the field, you'd put Kelsey and Rice ahead of him, you know, in yak situations and screen situations over the middle of the field. Um, so I just don't know why some people think he's the next Tyree kill. It doesn't make sense to me. I, I would agree there. I would say this. I think he is the best weapon that they've had. Well, let me rephrase this. He is the best, I guess, NVS slash McCold Harmon type of player that they've had in that role, right? That field stretcher type of player. Since Tyreek, yeah, I agree. Yes, since Tyreek. And I'm not saying he's nowhere near the talent of Tyreek. I'm just saying he can play the role better and he can do significantly oh, more. And we've seen him carry a workload there in Carolina in the past. We've seen him carry a workload even with Lamar Jackson. I guess that maybe that was more of like, you know, blown coverages, right, with mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson, it felt like, at the time. Yeah. But we've seen him be successful. So if Rice, if Rice goes down, hypothetically, Hollywood Brown easily steps up to be the guy because he's been there before. So I would say that I would agree in a sense of he, yeah, is the best quote-unquote player since Tyreek Hill, not based off talent, just based off what he can bring to the team I don't, I don't uh, agree. I disagree. And, and I think that's what's exciting. And I, and I don't, I would still have Rice over him. Um, oh, yeah. I wonder, I, I just, I'm not saying Hollywood Brown's going to be irrele irrelevant, but I no, do I believe he so carves out a role. And I wonder how much that's truly going to impact Rice. Now, I don't think it yeah. impacts him to the point where he's still not somebody you should be starting week in and week out at this moment, but it's somebody mm. that I am projecting to be okay. Maybe he is a low-tier wide receiver, too. 
Yeah. You know? Well, I think um, everyone, you know, when, when I, I, I came out pretty bold on Rasheed Rice to begin the offseason back in January. Got a lot of pushback from it. Um, I think the common pushback from the community in the comments was they're going to draft a wide receiver at 32. It's locked and loaded. Like, with as much respect as possible, isn't this the best case scenario for Rasheed Rice? A one-year deal for Hollywood Brown? A team that is unlikely to give him a huge contract after this? What, based off the last three years that the Chiefs has done, indicates to us that they would pay Hollywood Brown a huge deal if he does well here? I, like, I, this is their motto. This is like I mean, the Tom yeah. Brady Patriot motto. It's like, get 100%. these really good players on one-year deals. We're not going to pay anyone long-term. You think they would have wouldn't have paid Snead if they felt that way? That that's something they were willing to do for certain players. So, mm-hmm. um, in I my agree. opinion, this is no threat to Rasheed Rice long term. But it absolutely, in, in my opinion, it rules out wide receiver at thirty two because that has not been what the Chiefs have done since they traded away Tyree Kill. It has been defense, defense, defense. Uh, McDuffie, um, Carl Loftus. You know that is what they've done with their late first round picks is build around their defense and you know. This whole narrative that they have to go wide receiver at 32, I don't think that applies anymore because they just got Hollywood Brown. They have a better wide receiver room than they did last year when they won the Super Bowl. And uh, I also don't think I can rank Hollywood too high because we'll have the same questions next year. What if it doesn't work out? Where will he go? What will his contract look like? Who will his quarterback be? So yeah, um, it's exciting for best ball, but I don't think it's exciting for any other format in my opinion. And what, what hurts, I guess I would arguably say maybe the next Hollywood Brown on the Chiefs is that they've won the Super Bowl without paying their number mm. one wide receiver in Tyreek yeah. Hill. They was like, okay, we're going to let Tyreek Hill go, but we're still going to win the Super Bowl with some rookies yeah. and some Randys. Um, mm-hmm. And that's exactly what's going to affect Hollywood Brown because if that was the case and they didn't win the Super Bowl and it was because you guys didn't have a wide receiver or you guys were, sh- you know, the wide sure. receivers weren't making plays, maybe we need to sign a guy that can handle something and that's yeah. Hollywood Brown is that in my opinion, but yeah, just absolutely. doesn't, they're just not He's a perfect fit that. in the offense. I just don't think it means volume. Yeah. Not it's going to have to come off of efficiency. Um, last thing I'll say on Jameson Williams, very excited about him. Y'all know I have a bias towards him. One of my favorite players to come into the NFL in the last three years. Really? I love him. Um, so there is some bias there, but you know, we have to keep in mind that Jameson has never been a full-time player as of yet. Uh, the Detroit way is really earning your way into the lineup. Uh, as a rookie, sure. coming off an ACL injury, he never played over 25% of the snaps. Never saw a high target share. Uh, you know, Then he had the, the suspension. He comes back, and he never plays like over 70% of the snaps in any single game. Now they're talking about him being a full-time starter for that team. That That is exciting to me. I think they can finally work him into the offense. And it's a slow burn, but I do think there is a serious chance at like a top 30 finish and that might not sound exciting but it's exciting to me yeah look it makes sense we'll have to wait and see what happens with with jmo there but talent's there first round mm-hmm. pick what was it, top 15 top 16 if i'm not mistaken yeah in that pick where he was drafted so um completely completely agree here love it love the tier brother that is it uh lots of controversy i'm sure the comic section will just be oh, full goodness. of respectful comments and people respectfully agreeing or disagreeing i'm You're sure there won't idiot. be any craziness where you guys there. are crazy uh, how do you yeah. how do you guys have a channel yeah. what, what are you guys are doing yeah. Yeah, anyways <laughs> this this ranking list tells me you obviously have no idea who what you're doing i, I wish this I could is a be, redraft list i wish i could be in one of your leagues yeah <laughs> Oh, I wish I could be in your league with Jason. <laughs> you know, we, we, we can hear it already. Us versus our comment section. It's a yeah, battle. I know. <laughs> uh, anyway, we appreciate you. Hit the like button. We'll see you soon. All love. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh. It's so easy. Even your grandma could scan that QR code right there.